What's up guys, welcome back. My name is Charles, MX Revival, MXRevival.com, and it has been a long time since I did a Chinese dirt bike video for you guys, and I figured it was time. I definitely owe you one. And guys, today we're going to be talking about the 2022 SSR Motorsports SR300. The main reason I'm doing this video is because a lot of you guys are having problems with it, especially the carburetor. So this will apply to 2021 as well as 2022 SR300s, and in some cases, also the 2020. Just depending on your carburetor setup or what you opt to do to your 2020 after you watch this video So a lot of you guys saw the original 2020 SR 300 video. I bought the bike I was genuinely curious about it all on my own and I just developed this strange affinity for the damn thing Even though I'm more of a motocrosser and grew up that way on traditional brands I guess you could say Yamaha's Honda Suzuki's all that sort of thing. When I saw the 2020 SR300, I just knew I had to get it. I knew I had to do something with it. There was just this major magnetism about it and I had to go get it and I had to start making these videos. What that effectively did was bridge a little connection between myself and SSR. And so today we're gonna to be taking my 2020 and turning it into a 2022. And like I said, this will also apply to the 21 model SR300 because so far as I know, the 21 is the same as the 22. The only difference between the 21 and 22 versus the 20 is that the carburetor setup and some of the accessories around the carburetor. Now today's video is going to be extremely information dense. I'm going to need to add chapters to this video because we're going to overview what comes in the 21 and 22 versus the 20. I'm going to break down, open, and explain the FCR clone carburetor you have inside your 21 and 22 because I believe a lot of the problem is just a lack of understanding about the FCR carburetor you have in your bike anyway. And then I'm actually going to install all the 22 components in my 2020, make it a 22, and then I'm going to go out and ride it for the first time and see what you guys are dealing with. And so again, if you guys need to skip ahead or rewatch a certain section, I will go ahead and put chapters in the description below so you can jump around. And I'm also going to link all the 2020 SR300 videos I've done in the description as well. We developed the first Electron mod for this bike, first turnkey set of decals for this bike, so you guys can actually customize your SR300, including the particular radiator shrouds it has on it. I still have some other mods to do in the back of my head that I haven't done yet, but overall the bike's been great. I have about 10 hours on it now. For the money, you cannot beat this machine. It's easy to understand why somebody would want one, especially if it's your very first motorcycle and you were able to get a brand new bike with a cooling fan an electric start, and a bunch of really cool trail accessories for a really low price. These bikes go for about half of what a Japanese race bike go for. So for the money, you can't beat it. And today we're gonna try and fix it. Every bike has an Achilles heel. And today we're gonna talk about your arch nemesis, the FCR clone carburetor and the 21 and 22 SR300. Now, if you guys own the 250 or the 450, totally different systems though, I probably can aid you in some regard. I'll go ahead and also leave a contact link in the description below. I've got a few Electron mods in those, both the 250 and the 450. But today, like I said, we're gonna focus on your arch nemesis, the FCR clone. And to start that, I'm gonna show you guys what components come in the 22 that don't come in the 20. You guys are gonna be able to see how to turn your 20 into a 21 or 22. You guys are also gonna see how to turn your 21, 22 into a 20 so you can run the Electron mod and all of the related components that are gonna make this whole thing possible in either direction. Now, as this video goes on, I will also do my best to list part numbers in the description below. Some of the boxes I received from SSR do have part numbers while others do not. If you are a dealer and it is very flattering to have dealers watching these videos and contacting me via web or YouTube videos, it's great that we can help each other out. The end goal is just to get guys riding. So if you are a dealer and you're able to get a hold of these part numbers on these components and you see that some are missing below, please add that in the comments. I'll go ahead and update the list. That way we can help you guys out on your 20, 21, 22 SR300. All right. Having said that, I received some very specific components from JR at SSR. He's their lead engineer. He's a very brilliant guy. It's been a pleasure getting to know him. And the bike actually wouldn't have had any upgrades or developments, most likely without his guidance. And so he's the one that brought the FCR carburetor to fruition in the 21 and 22 because he already knew that the 20 was lacking severely. It had a two stroke style carburetor in it. So what are those components? Well, first off, we have the carburetor, of course. This is the FCR clone. This is a really good looking clone. There are a few things on this carburetor that are a bit different from a Japanese FCR. Some of you guys have already ripped FCRs out of Japanese bikes or picked them up on eBay and thrown these in your SR300s and had pretty good results. Now guys, this is a 33 millimeter FCR. I had a chance to ride JR's modified SR300s at Glen Helen on the actual motor Motocross track. I will link that video in the description below as well. 
and those bikes absolutely ripped. At the time, these weren't out, so he stuffed a 33 millimeter genuine Honda FCR into one of the 300s out of a CRF 150R, the water-cooled race 150. So if you guys are peering around eBay, you can also do that. To be honest, the bike was incredible versus the stock version of the 20 at the time. And so I believe that is how all of this came into fruition. There are some things this carburetor's lacking versus a genuine FCR, one of which I will show you later, but if I do miss it for some reason, usually a genuine FCR has a push-pull cable, that way when you're rolling your throttle forward or back, there's a cable working with a spring in either direction. Now, this carburetor was cloned in such a way that it would accept that, maybe a genuine Honda throttle setup, but the throttle cable that comes with this is just a pull only, and I don't think it's gonna be a problem snaps back just fine but it's one thing I noticed also compared to a genuine FCR from Kian the setup is basically the same though some of the components and fasteners look a little bit different to me now accompanying that carburetor swap is a throttle cable I'm gonna go ahead and use this because JR sent it to me I'm not sure if your 20 would fit this but I doubt it because this threads into the side of the carburetor body whereas on the 20 the cable slides into the top I'm also going to assume for now that they are using the stock throttle assembly the same one I have in terms of where this connects up top at your actual throttle and then the key to making this entire thing fit is going to be the intake boot and of course the air boot now This is the main reason why you guys on 21s can't run my 2020 electron mod However, if you elect to get these parts for the 2020 which I do have the part numbers for and will link below You can then swap these out run the electron mod eliminate jets in either direction Whether it's 2020 21 or 22 you can just be done with carburetors that have traditional jetting circuits in them altogether Now those aren't without their own little quirks and caveats, but but it is a much better turnkey solution. I've been using it for a while now. Video link down below. And I'll also link a video down below that shows you guys how to do a carburetor swap in the first place. So being that the FCR clone carburetor has different flanges on either side, you need these to put the 21-22 setup into your 20. And who knows, if I get this carburetor plugged in and it is my intent to find good settings for it, then you guys can upgrade to the 21-22 style on your old bikes. And to be honest, this FCR setup should be light years better than the 2020 carburetor this is the style of carburetor that came in all of the Japanese racing four strokes And so we're kind of going back in time here because this carburetor really has all the same problems that those ones did back in the mid 2000s Then of course fuel injection came and the rest is history Here's another very distinctly different part for this FCR version The 2020 air filter cage is covered in this 3m weather adhesive I found out from JR that he actually did that manually and they were trying to slow down the amount of air Or reduce the amount of air that was actually getting to the 2020 carburetor and engine as a whole and of course there are a few other parts and pieces that came one of which was the door for the side of the carburetor a little bit of hardware some extra jets JR also sent me a fuel line and an inline fuel filter for the FCR and lastly he sent me one of these flex jets now what the flex jet allows you to do is quick tune your fuel screw on the fly and this is a big deal because those are a pain in the ass to get to in most cases you actually can't because they're under the carburetor but this is a circuit that could fluctuate with temperature if it's cold in the morning warmer by midday elevation and could need an adjustment while you're actually out on the trail most of the time you can't do that so this thing converts the FCR fuel screw into like a idle setting knob so you can just adjust it on the fly so thank you JR I can tell you like me because you sent this all right guys so let's head over to the bench we're gonna take the FCR carburetor we're gonna break it open we're gonna look inside I'm gonna show you what different circuits are in the FCR why it can be confusing why you guys get that little bit of a bog right off the bottom then I'm gonna go ahead and get my filthy 2020 model SR 300 cleaned up so I can take it apart and start all this stuff and then tomorrow I'm gonna go ride it and we'll put that all in the same video so again use the chapters if you need them let's go to the bench and tear this thing open guys real quick as we make our way over to the bench to dissect that clone FCR I can't believe I didn't mention it this is a YZ250 I'm building for you guys to win I've been going overboard and other YouTube episodes about it every build episode I'm also giving away MX parts so check this out when you have time link in the description somebody is going to win this bad mother right here all right let's go all right guys, here we are on the bench with the Kian FCR clone. I wanna show you guys to the best of my ability how this thing works and how the circuits inside it jive with one another. It will also probably help shed some light on some of the issues you guys are having in general with this style of carburetor. So first and foremost, you have your throttle cable which enters this cam here. As you twist your throttle up on the bars, you're gonna roll this thing and this is where phase one problems come into play and I'm gonna explain that first. Guys, the bench might shake. 
once in a while, so bear with me while we're working on this carburetor together. So here's phase one. This is where you guys are probably getting some bog right off the bottom, right when you roll your throttle back and the bike wants to fall on its face a little bit maybe, or the bike maybe dies, whatever it may be. We're gonna use my fancy little lady screwdriver here to point some things out. So hey, don't hate on my pink screwdriver, all right? So when you guys pull the throttle and you roll this cam back, the slide, of course, starts to lift. Now at that point, the cam is also actuating all of this linkage here, and this does something very specific. So what you have here as you roll this cam back is this cam is rolling this assembly here that normally would have a gap before it touches this plastic lever. This plastic lever then forces a rod down in this orifice, and we'll get to where that goes in just a second. But as you can see, this has already been wired tied together. Now this was done by JR at SSR before he sent it out. So I don't know if your 21 and 22s actually have this mod right out of the factory. And back in the day, they called this the O-ring mod on the factory race bikes. What they're doing is they're taking slop out of this juncture here between the screw and this piece of plastic. Actually, let's use my little pink screwdriver. So normally there's a little bit of a gap here. When you roll the cam, it actuates this guy here. Then there would be a little bit of room that would get taken up like a dead space before it came into contact with this piece of plastic, at which point, as I mentioned, rolls and forces down a rod in this part of the carburetor body here. So this wire tie would be put in this location to clean up the slack and what this was supposed to do is eliminate the bog when you first crack your throttle open. So if you can imagine rolling your throttle back and then kind of nothing really happening right here until a certain point in your throttle twist and then all of a sudden your bike getting a burst of fuel from this actuation and then revving. So there would be like a gap aka the bog you feel off the bottom end. This is probably the most notable pain in the ass on this carburetor and FCRs just like it, the genuine ones. So it's an old school problem. This was the fix. This is the first time I've actually jumped into the 2122 SR300 carburetor. So right off the bat, I'm noticing why you guys, even with the O-ring mod, might be having this bog. Maybe, maybe not. Inside here, you can see the tip of the rod you can kind of see there's a ball or a sphere on the end of the rod. It's held in place by this piece of plastic here or this shape of the plastic mold here. Now, hopefully you can see this, I'll do my best, but even though we have the O-ring mod or that wire tie up there, I noticed that that rod inside doesn't actuate. See, the rod's not moving down at all in the first part of this stroke here. So there, it starts to move down. You can see that sphere, the camera's picking it up kind of sort of, starting to travel down, but up top, let's see if I can get some light on that little guy. It's still not moving, it's still not actuating. So even though we have this mod here, meant to pick up the slack and directly force this rod down in a genuine key and carburetor, the design of this rod in the carburetor body, coupled with the design of this plastic mold on this cam, is still leaving some slack. It's still leaving slack in that action. So that's probably a better picture there. You can see the little black mold of the plastic and the light shining off the sphere on the top of that rod. You can also see in this area, you'd be rolling your throttle back and nothing would be happening. Probably a nice little bog. Get here, starts to actuate. Nothing, actuation. So. That's a problem <laughs> right off the bat. That wouldn't happen in a key in a uh, genuine key in if you had one of those in your bike because this O-ring mod or this wire tie would have already been in place. Okay, we're gonna go a little further down the line here as to why you get a bog when this isn't set up right. There are more problems than just the slack we've seen right here. So when this cam rolls back and you do get that rod actuation, that rod is forcing itself into a diaphragm down in here. Now this as you can see in the cast of the body, has the shape where that rod would go. And then this guy down here, there is a rubber diaphragm in here meant to pump fuel when pushed by this rod up through more orifices in these bodies here, right up into the carburetor's venturi. So you can kind of see, I believe this is it here, this part of the casting. Then you can see that part of the casting there, down there. And then that works its way up to that little bastard 
inside there. Now the amount of fuel that is allowed to enter this orifice and then shoot into the carburetor's venturi right off the crack of the throttle or what would be right off the crack of the throttle if you didn't have a gap in your linkage and your rod into the diaphragm is all controlled by something called the leak jet. We're going to check it out when we open the carburetor and show you just like a main or a pilot jet how fuel is controlled to get to this point. Now we may open this carburetor and find out that it doesn't have a leak jet because it's a clone. I'm not sure yet. I do see a pilot air jet in here so there's a good sign that this clone is actually a legitimate clone and so far by looking at it, it like i said does look like a pretty damn high quality version of a cloned kian anyways why does all of this exist why do you need all this crap on a carburetor like it just it's a bunch of stuff it's another circuit why would you want it well now the explanation for all of this is pretty simple and that is because four strokes do not produce enough vacuum when they are at a low throttle position or idle setting and so the idea is that when you rip your throttle open all of this action over here happens. It forces fuel up through this orifice and right off the crack of your idle where the four stroke has the most trouble getting fuel, this little guy squirts a nice little stream of fuel right in on the bottom end. So in theory, that's what's supposed to be happening, right? When you crack the throttle, but I can see due to the slack in this plastic cam that you still have slack before it contacts this rod and hits the diaphragm, then therefore shoots fuel up into the carbs venturi. So I think we found our problem on that one. So let's go ahead and open this thing and I'll show you guys those parts. Some of these screws might be longer or shorter, so just be aware of that. And when we open this up, there's also a spring inside, so be sure that thing doesn't shoot across the room. All right, there we go. There's the spring that lets the diaphragm return to its original shape. There's also a bunch of O-rings in the bottom here, so there goes one of them. There's the diaphragm itself that's forced down by that rod. And then here's the port that fuel's supposed to shoot up through into a leak jet that's in the bowl and then up into our little buddy up here in the carburetor, that little brass guy. So I think you guys get the point about all that by now. All right, now we're gonna take the bowl off. You will know where this choke goes, which I like, by the way, that you can actually reach this from the side of the bike. The choke goes right back where that little peg is and that hook, it's really hard to miss, so no worries there. And those screws are longer than the accelerator pump. As I mentioned, they might be, so kind of hard to screw those up. There's three for one and four for the other. These little hose guides here for your overflow hoses are always in the back of the car rider, so easy to remember. They also have little pegs that they sit on, so it's no big deal. You won't mistake where they go. All right, let's open this monster. Nice and clean, brand new, never used. And guys, there's that rod. And now with the help of old Pinky here, you guys can see that's the leak jet right there. You can see this cast where the fuel can flow through and so you can actually take this out like any other jet and change the side my goodness pinky is versatile is she not so check it out there you go this is a jet with no number on it so i'm not surprised it's a chinese clone it shouldn't have a leak jet number on it so i have no idea what size it is and when you put these back in don't go crazy on them because it will strip this guy here is just an overflow if your bike flips over while you're riding and you can't get to it or something it'll just push fuel out onto the ground so that pretty much wraps up the whole accelerator pump leak jet circuit which if i had to guess is the source of all of your woes now everything else in here is very standard you have the float as far as i can tell the float is hitting the needle valve at the appropriate time which is this little guy in here that is shutting your fuel off as it comes in float rises pushes a float needle up stops the incoming fuel from this inlet here and we may as well take that apart just to show you you can give this a little tap and then this dowel right here comes out at which point the float will also fly out so just be aware of that to keep a finger on it there's the pin hold this thing upside down and lift the float and there you can see the needle that shuts off the fuel. Let me flip this over and give you a, a better view. And I'll be damned if that thing doesn't have a metal tip instead of a rubber one. I need to look at that. We're good. It's rubber. It's silver in color. I've never seen a silver piece of rubber. So anyways, if that was metal, it would raise some concerns because if it was metal and it was plugging off the fuel supply, I don't see how it could keep a good seal not being rubber, but Everything looks good. Now, when you're reattaching this to the tang right here, you want to be really careful because if you bend that tang, which is meant to be adjusted, you could also alter your float height and you don't want to do that. That can cause you some serious heartaches. Reason being, if you bend that too much or on accident, which happens a lot when people open their carburetors, is you will alter 
where the float stops and either let in too much fuel or not enough. If you're letting in too much, that overflow I showed you will just be spewing all the time. So don't bend that little tank. If you have a used bike and it's spewing fuel all the time, it would be either that little needle feed I showed you with the rubber tip or perhaps the float is out of adjustment, therefore letting in excess fuel. Next up, we have the main jet. It is notoriously a six millimeter be it two stroke or four stroke. What rides inside the main jet is the needle. The needle is housed in the slide and we'll get to that as soon as we pop the lid off this guy. The main jet for reference is numbered. You guys probably all have the same jet if your carb is still stock, it's a 135. Next up we have the eight mil. I, for the life of me, I'm drawing a blank on what this part is called that the main jet lives in right now. Anyhow, you can see the needle right there that is living inside of this guy here. And then the main jet screws into the bottom of that. So the main jet is allowing a certain amount of fuel in and the main jet controls probably 3 8 throttle all the way through 100% throttle. That's where it probably starts to come on as the needle rises, we'll get into that in a minute. And then we've got your pilot jet, which is always just to the side of the main and always extracted by a flathead screwdriver. Look at Pinky go. Oh, that wasn't the pilot, I'm sorry. That's actually the starter jet, which I forgot even existed. It's been a long time since I was in an FCR. And this is the pilot jet here. It is also extracted by a flathead, like so. All right guys, so your starter jet does not have a number on it. I'm pretty sure this is only utilized when the choke is pulled. And then you've got your 38 pilot jet here. So some of these have sizes, some don't. So your pilot jet controls the throttle range probably from just past close to about one third throttle. That's where it's giving the carburetor fuel. So as you can see, there are several different jetting circuits in these FCR carburetors. Not not to mention that is all in conjunction with any slop you might have in the linkage, the accelerator pump diaphragm. We haven't even made it to the needle yet. And then there's a pilot air jet in there as well. So it's pretty easy to see why you might have problems with a setup like this. If all these need to work in conjunction with one another and overlap, and they're at the mercy of elevation and temperature, not to mention different fuel octanes, what have you. So now we'll go ahead and get the slide out. And as mentioned, the slide also contains the needle. Oh, well, don't worry, it gets more complicated. So when you're working on these, you've got a Phillips screwdriver, a standard screwdriver, a number six socket, and a eight socket, eight millimeter. I just pulled this cap with an eight millimeter socket that holds the needle into the slide. And there's the needle. For starters, this needle is an FCR 331. I don't know if that's like an official key in part number or something SSR uses. At any rate, you can see that there are notches in this needle and a needle clip. When the slide goes up and this needle goes up, and as you can see, the needle has a taper to it. Different needles have different tapers. That is coming up out of this main jet, which lives in the float bowl. And as it comes up, more fuel is allowed to travel up into the carburetor around the needle's taper and rapid combustion ensues if you're jetted right. Now I'm not gonna take the slide out, but that's how you would do it if you wanted to. You would pull this here and then the whole slide assembly would come out. At which point you will see a slide plate and yet another diaphragm. Oh, and don't worry, the punishment continues. This is your fuel screw. So when you pull this fuel screw out, you are going to have a couple more awesome accessories Built by midgets, I believe. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this fuel screw with this flex jet here. Thanks again, JR, that's a huge deal. Now when I pulled this out, a bunch of crap that's supposed to come with it did not come out. There's a spring, a washer, and an O-ring. Now some of you guys might also be having problems with this if you've been pulling your carb apart a lot. The O-ring can get pinched and then also get smashed onto the tip of that thing and block the orifice. So it's just another circuit you need to inspect. If right now you're thinking about that Electron mod we came out with for the 2020, you wouldn't be alone. There's a reason I did it. And that was before the FCR was even a thing. So there's the spring that keeps tension on the fuel screw so it doesn't fall out while you're riding. And the washer and the O-ring are still in here. You can kind of see the light shining on the washer deep down in there. And so the O-ring is sitting right on top of that washer to keep a seal. I'm not gonna take that out. I'd like to use this thing before I have to rebuild it. Let's go ahead and install the flex jet. This thing is gonna be a lifesaver on the trail. That's awesome. It came with the washer and the O-ring I wanted to show you that are stuck inside that carburetor body. So you have the fuel screw essentially, then you have the spring that keeps tension on this assembly so it doesn't fall out. Then there's a little washer and then there's an O-ring at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and take the O-ring and this flat washer 
off of this flex jet and then just simply install the flex jet into the carburetor body. And so then this is what your fuel screw setup would look like had I been able to retrieve all of it from that carburetor body. You're gonna wanna put that in the bag and set it aside probably never to be used again but you never know stuff like this comes in handy or maybe you'll help a buddy in you go and guys we're just going to take this thing to closed for right now so there it bottomed out and then we'll adjust it when we actually get it on the bike and start it up for the first time and so guys are you even really surprised after seeing all that why you might have some problem with your carburetor even though it's brand new before you ever even twist the throttle you have potential gaps in the linkage that pushes the diaphragm that shoots fuel through the leak jet that's supposed to keep your bike running at extremely low RPM, then you have the main jet and the pilot jet and the pilot air jet and then the starter jet. You have a diaphragm in the slide underneath the slide plate. Then you have the needle and I didn't even tell you that you guys can raise or lower this needle clip position to alter where the taper of the needle is inside the needle jet and the main jet at all times. So all these circuits need to overlap and work together and when they do it is blissful. Some of you guys have probably felt it before, but that's when you can get max power out of these things. And like I said, I rode JRs with the genuine Honda Kian in it at Glen Helen, and it ripped. Like, compared to the stock 2020, it was really good. The problem is this is in the genuine Honda carburetor, and now with this gap in the plastic cam and diaphragm rod, I'm not even sure how I'm going to get rid of that. I don't think I can. It's just the way the parts are cast. It's the way they were molded. Maybe I could get a different rod that will fit in there and not have the little sphere that the plastic tangs are under so we can eliminate that gap. I don't think so. I don't really see how I could do that. So now I'm actually hesitant to even use this because it's going to run, but I already know it's not going to be perfect. But I'm still gonna do it because I'm a trooper and I'm gonna take my bike apart for you 21 and 22 guys so we can get that review underway. We'll see how much different it was from the 20, how much different it is from my Electron mod. And at this point, even though this was supposed to be a huge step in the right direction, I think it still is, but the execution wasn't 100%. That slack in the rod underneath that cam that pushes everything through that leak jet, which is exactly where you guys have the bog, still can't really be remedied. We'll see, we'll get this thing back together, we'll get it installed in the bike, and tomorrow we'll take it out and ride it. You can probably also see why fuel injection was a welcome addition to motorcycles in general, even though it adds a ton of weight to the bike. I'm going to go ahead and say that if you guys can lock down a genuine Honda 33mm FCR key in from eBay or something like that from, like I said earlier, the CRF150R, and then you do this little O-ring mod where you wire tie the cam to the linkage, then I think you'd be in a really good shape, especially after riding one. Now, that doesn't mean that that bike is going to come with the proper jets in it. So you might be at square one where it runs, but you need to tune all those circuits that overlap. But at the very least, I think you would be able to get a carburetor that has a rod that doesn't have any slack in it. And that is the number one main thing that creates that bog you guys are all feeling and all complaining about and all emailing and calling me about. So like I said, I'm a little bummed on that because I can't really fix it, at least not in this carburetor. So that's enough rambling. I'm going to put this back together. We're gonna get the bike taken apart. We're gonna swap out the air boot, the intake, all that stuff. And because that's gonna take me a little bit of time and I'm under the gun right now in order to get the bike ready, I'm gonna go ahead and reference a carburetor install video that is in the description below. It's a previous SSR video I did, SR300, where I installed the Electron carburetor, but it should suffice in regards to how you would swap a carburetor out of this bike put a different one in it, and then also route the throttle cable. So, so next up, we're gonna ride this pig and we will start the official 2021 and 2022 SSR SR300 review. All right guys, everything is installed. We have the carburetor in, the intake flange, the air boot, all that stuff. Regarding all the band clamps that hold on the air boot and the intake flange, they actually seem to be of better quality zinc coating or whatever corrosion resistant coating is on those. So that was nice. As far as time for the install, really straightforward. You can actually just flip this subframe straight up in the air, pin it back down with the two top bolts. It'll stick straight up in the air. You'll have access to everything. That took about 20 minutes. Worst case, if you're new, you probably sink an hour into it. Not a big deal. One problem I did encounter was that there's a starter solenoid under the seat on the right hand side 
and that contacted the new FCR clone carburetor, so I actually could not install it. I ended up pulling this part off its mounting bracket and then bending the mounting bracket tangs up until it contacted the underside of the frame, and that allowed me to put the carburetor in there, although it's still really tight, and so it makes me really curious as to where they actually mounted that part on the 21 and 22. If one of you guys wants to send me a photo via email, that would be awesome. At any rate, I still got it done. I just moved it out of the way. It's stuck in there pretty good behind the starter key itself, the tumbler, so it can't really move, and so that's good enough. I don't have much else a choice in that matter anyways, so if you guys have 2020 models and you're doing this, you will encounter that. A few other things I noticed that I didn't really like, but they're not really a big deal, is that the door, the plastic cover on the throttle cam side of the new car radar has, as I mentioned earlier, the locations to put a push-pull cable system. And since the SSR only uses a pool cable and not a return cable, there's actually a hole in the carburetor where weather, dirt, dust, water can get in. This isn't technically inside of the carburetor where it would get into the engine. And carburetors do actually tend to get dirty behind this door, so it's not a deal breaker, but it would have been nice if that was plugged. Something you can easily do yourself with silicone. Same thing on the bottom of that plastic door. There was a bolt that's supposed to go there that is usually there that maybe, since these parts were sent to me after the fact, maybe just didn't make it in the box. Again, easy fix. Stick a bolt in it, some silicone, whatever. Worst case that little hole that's not plugged on the bottom will actually serve as a weep hole if water does get in. So we're about to fire this thing up for the first time and then you guys and I are going to go through the fuel screw tuning procedure. I'm going to share with you a tuning procedure that I really like from Motocross Action Magazine when these types of carburetors were all the rage. And then to make this a true to life test I went ahead and installed my stock exhaust pipe because most of you are going to have the stock exhaust pipe that does not have a spark arrestor. And I also went ahead and put in my stock air filter although this time it has oil on it and when I got this bike from the dealer went out to the trails and checked the air filter it wasn't oiled so probably an improper PDI by the dealer at any rate that's something that can affect the test as far as having oil or not or having a spark arrestor or not so I'm trying to keep this as true as it would be if I were to go buy a 22 off the showroom floor. One more thing I noticed, and I could be imagining it, is that when I do roll the throttle back, it feels like it tops out sooner, as if there's less room inside the carburetor for the slide to raise before it hits the ceiling, so to speak. And that's a welcome change for me. I felt like the throttle throw on the old carburetor and the throttle throw on the Electron were kind of long, and I like a faster style of power. So I like that. We'll see what it feels like out on the trails. And if I notice anything, of course, I'll mention it. All right, guys, so it's time for the first start. We'll see if it even starts. Of course, we're gonna try and start it here before I take it out to the trails. And if it runs here and we can tune the fuel screw properly, I'm gonna load this sucker up in the moto van and head my ass straight out to Hollister Hills in Hollister, California, and go get some laps in on this thing. So let's try and fire this thing up, go through the fuel screw tuning procedure, and I'll also link this procedure in the description below. That way, if you guys are having trouble with it, you can check it out, print it out, whatever it might be, and I think it will serve you really well. All right, guys, so here we go. First time turning on the fuel. Here we go, it's going through the filter, filling up the bowl. So far, so good. I don't have any leaks going on out of the overflow. We'll go ahead and pull the choke. As you guys remember, I have this fuel screw all the way closed. Now, do yourselves a favor. If you have this carburetor out of your bike, you need to get one of these, and at the very least, get one of those fuel screws that's about yay long and sticks out out of the bottom of the carburetor because, as you can see, you're not getting a screwdriver in here, and this is a adjustment that you literally might have to do at all times of the day. So this is extremely handy. JR, thanks for sending this. We're gonna be tuning this once we get the bike to fire up, and we'll be following that motocross action procedure. So the key's on, give her a go. Throttle's open a little bit in my hand, choke is on. Choke's off, try that. Might need to open this up a little bit. I'm gonna go about one turn. Choke's back on. We're off to a great start. Another half turn on the fuel screw down below. Choke is still on. Choke is off. It wants to go. I'm gonna raise the slide a little bit, which is also the idle. All right. I'm gonna close this fuel screw again, all the way. Double check my turns out. There's 
half, one, one and a half, chokes off, chokes on. Try the hot start, which obviously shouldn't work right now. You guys must have some really dead batteries. We're gonna go ahead and give the throttle a couple of whacks. This would be actuating that rod I showed you guys and shooting a little squirt of fuel into this area here and hopefully priming the engine. There you go. We'll let that run for a second with the choke on. I'm bringing the idle back down with the knob, which I'll probably have to readjust once I close the choke. Choke is still on or open, allowing more fuel in. I close the choke. Still very cold, don't mind the bog. Turning the idle up. All right, so that's pretty typical for the first time trying to start a new carburetor install. Now we'll go ahead and do this fuel screw adjustment once the bike gets up to operating temperature. If you don't wait for it to warm up, you're gonna be chasing your tail on this setting, so just be patient. Tuning carburetors is already... <laughs> nice. Choke back on. Go ahead and prime it a few times. Come on, baby. Raise the idle, just a hair. All right, guys, so I just did a couple drags up the street. I got it nice and hot. As you can see, it's still running. I wanna see what happens when I shut it off and try and restart it. I have done zero adjustments to the fuel screw yet. And so my initial impressions are really good. It has really good bottom end torque, better than the Electron, which I'm not surprised about. The Electron is something that smooths the entire power band out. So, so if you're using one of those, you can always up your rear sprocket by one tooth and get some of that torque back while still maintaining some of that smooth, predictable, and confidence-inspiring power the Electron makes, of course, without jets. But right off the bat, this has more bottom end torque for sure. And that's cool because I still haven't adjusted a single thing. And I might be really close, but this feels more like a race bike, which is really cool. I know that's what they were going for. This feels more like what I rode at Glen Helen on the 2020s that had those genuine Honda 33s in them. So, so far, so good. We're definitely taking this thing to the trail park today. So how does it start? That's good. But you guys can hear just how loud the thing is. It revs up and then drops. When I tilt the bike, it revs up, put it back on the stand, the revs go back down. So we're gonna tune it and see if we can get that to go away. You might be able to hear the exhaust sounds a little bit lumpy. So we'll be paying attention to that as we do the tuning procedure. All right, so I'm gonna read this procedure to you so you can hear it, digest it, understand it, and then we'll apply it. And again, it'll be linked in the description below if you need to quick cheat sheet it. Dear MXA, this is from a reader. I own a 2013 Yamaha YZ250F, which is a bike that had a carburetor just like this. It's a good bike, but its real claim to fame is that it was the last carbureted 250cc four-stroke. I have some jetting issues, and a guy said there is something called a fuel screw on the carb that will allow me to make the bike run richer or leaner. Where is it, and how do I adjust it? Well, you guys know where it is now, and you guys know how to replace it. If you want one you can actually access on the trail. So their answer was this and it's to me This is one of the best explanations ever the fuel screw bleeds down how much fuel mixes with the air coming from the carbs bypass hole Now this is inside the carbs venturi in the hole. You said hole. Do not mistake it for a two-stroke air screw The air screw is on the side of the carburetor and meters the amount of air that makes it to the pilot jet nozzle That's on a two-stroke we're not talking about two strokes. A fuel screw, on the other hand, is what we're talking about, and it is located underneath the float bowl, as I've shown you guys, and meters the amount of fuel that makes it to the carb's main body. Four strokes use fuel screws instead of air screws because they don't have enough low speed vacuum for an air screw talked about that earlier. At low RPM, a four-stroke creates less engine vacuum than a two-stroke. It is the vacuum created by the engine that sucks the fuel out of the float bowl and into the engine. Thanks to the fuel screw, a four-stroke is able to start easier and run cleanly at its very low RPM idle speed by getting fuel via the fuel screw. So here's how you tune it. 
before you touch the fuel mixture screw, you must first warm up the engine and then bring it to a fast idle. We're kind of already there, you guys heard the bike. As a rule of thumb, 1800 RPM will do. I have a Tusk hour meter, which also reads RPMs. I don't think it's very accurate because it's saying the bike's at like 4K. And if I watch the meter to get down to 1800, I think the bike would die. So it must not be right. With the engine at a steady idle, turn the fuel screw in, which lessens the amount of fuel. That is that taper on the end of the fuel screw going deeper into the hole and sort of closing it off. A lot like the float needle that shuts off incoming fuel from going into the bowl. Same concept. Continue tightening the screw until the engine RPM drops and nearly dies. Now, slowly turn the screw back out, which increases the amount of fuel. You will hear the engine RPM begin to speed up and the exhaust note will become crisper. I mentioned the lumpy idle. Stop turning the fuel mixture screw at the exact moment when the engine hits its peak RPM. Peak RPM is where the engine runs cleanest and fastest. If you keep turning the screw out, the RPM will stay up, but the exhaust note will become dull, flat, and lumpy. I must have this thing burned into my memory because I'm using a lot of the same terms. If you have any doubts about the best setting, turn the fuel screw back in until the RPM slows back down and turn it back out again until it speeds back up. So now you definitely see why this flex jet or an accessible fuel screw is key out on the trail. Most of this is done by sound and feel. It's not a technical setting where you're like, I need to go 2.75 turns out and that's it. This is something that fluctuates with temperature, elevation, fuel octane, dirty filter, you name it. There is no right number of turns, only wrong numbers. Typically the fuel screw can be set anywhere from a half turn to two turns out. We're at a 1.5 right now. If you have to turn it more than two turns out, before it reaches peak RPM, it might indicate that the pilot jet is too small, not enough fuel, AKA lean. And we talked about that earlier too, where there's all these circuits overlapping to make the entire package run properly. Try the next larger pilot and retest the fuel mixture adjustment. Conversely, if peak RPM is reached before you turn the fuel mixture screw out half a turn, it could mean that the pilot jet is too rich. And that means it's too big. It's getting too much fuel. And that's why you get more revs because the engine's trying to burn that fuel. Sadly, you will need to check your fuel screw anytime the temperature changes, twice a day if it's cool and overcast during practice and bright and sunny for the first moto. So during different parts of the day is what they're trying to depict. Changes in temperature, elevation, and humidity will require fuel screw adjustments to avoid having to squeeze the tiny screwdriver up into the key and carb you can buy an aftermarket fuel screw that sticks out below the float bowl and can be turned by hand so there you guys have it pretty much just backing up everything we've already talked about all right guys so our bike runs let's go ahead and continue the 2022 sr 300 review this will of course apply to you 21 guys as well we now technically save for some really cool graphics that you can get on mxrevival.com have a 2022 sr 300 on our hands let's go ahead and tune that screw all right she's been sitting for a minute very good we're gonna close this off until it nearly dies, and it might. All right, right there. Open it just a hair. Prime it. So we wanna open this until the exact point where it reaches a higher RPM and no more. So basically I'm going to stop when I'm turning and the idle stops raising. Right about there. Now I can bring the idle down. All right, so I think we've set our fuel screw for now. Of course, when I get the holster and it warms up, this might change. I'd say that sounds pretty damn good.
All right, guys, so we're doing pretty good at this point. I'm ready to ride this thing, make sure this awesomeness is still happening when we're out on the trail. I hope this is helping you guys out tremendously. And right now, before I ride it, I'm going to go ahead and recommend, since you guys know all we've done is a tuning procedure, and since all my jets are stock, is to check and see if you guys have that wire tie mod done behind your carburetor's plastic door. I think JR did that for me before he sent me the carburetor. I don't know if they came like that on the production model. So that's gonna be something you definitely wanna look into. Right now, it seems like that plunger rod slack I was showing you earlier isn't really affecting anything. I've got good roll on power. It revs all the way through the RPM range. The jets are stock. So that might be something that you guys can do and really get to this point here, which so far is really, really good. I'm really excited to ride this. So let's take this pig out, what do you say? Alright guys, we made it. We're here at beautiful Hollister Hills in Hollister, California. So awesome this time of year. Everything is green. So it's probably been about an hour since I ran the bike at the house and got it in the van, drove out here, all that stuff. So I want to see if this thing starts easily when it's a little bit cooler. Probably not as cold as if it were to sit overnight. In fact, I can feel that it's not, but we'll see how it goes. Key on, gas on. So far so good. Zero choke. There was no choke on that. Here's choke. So anyways, that's awesome. We're gonna get geared up. We're gonna hit the trails and I'm looking really forward to it right now. Hoping to continue this trend of things going right so far. And guys, one more thing, because it will affect runnability, I also brought the spark rester. So a lot of you guys have spark resters by now and I figured that this was definitely something we wanted to put through its paces and see how it affects the runnability with the FCR setup. Right now I'm riding dirty, don't tell anybody. I'm in communist California, so I will get in trouble. Anyways, pro circuit test coming up after we get geared up, hit the trails, let's go have some fun. All right guys, we are on line. Now, this is worth mentioning before we get started. This is 101 octane fuel. Shouldn't make too big a difference if you guys are running 91 right off the pump. This is just something I have and keep in my RMZ 450 for track riding. And I haven't really noticed the difference on old China here, uh, either or. So anyways, that can sometimes affect your jetting. And I thought it was worth a mention. The other thing I want to show you guys is with the uh, throttle set up here and that would be that a the throttle cable for the fcr threaded right into the 2020 housing which had a different car rider, so that's good also i owe tim a refund on his throttle thanks for picking up your electron for your uh 21 looks like your stock throttle would have been fine so anyways appreciate you buddy and then third this here i have very little slack in here you can see the cable kind of working its way around this wheel, which actually has a real roller bearing in it. That was surprising and kind of cool. And so here, lock to lock this way and this way, same amount of play. You don't want your throttle to accidentally get opened under cable tension when you're steering. So something to pay attention to. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let this officially start the 2022 SR300 test. You guys can watch the full 2020 review for anything I miss in this video because I already reviewed this bike in an hour long video when I first bought it. So in a nutshell, this is like an XR250 on steroids in a way cooler package with electric start, a cooling fan, all kinds of stuff that's really great for the money. So key on, let's see if it still fires up. It's cooled off even more since we checked it out a second ago. I'm not gonna use the choke, fuel is on. Good stuff. Still pretty cold, all things considered. Oh, a little bog. This bike loves to run well when it's warmed up in the other two carburetor settings uh, I've tried, which is typical of literally any motorcycle on the planet. It sounds really good. All right, let's scoot. Guys, I'm gonna try and hit uh, a bunch of different sort of stuff. We'll go on some sort of off cam or single track and we'll just kind of see how it does. 
All right, guys, Harmony Gate. Pretty iconic trail here. I like to come on this trail, warm up. It also has some really cool little off camera single track stuff in the trees that you can dance around on. So right now, bike's been running for about a minute and a half to get here. Slight bog on the bottom. I'm letting this close all the way too. Let the RPMs come down. Now keep in mind you don't ride your bike like this. But even that did pretty well just now. Idle's just about perfect. It has really good, really good bottom end. Like right off the takeoff. Definitely stronger bottom end than the Electron. Just kind of goes see what kind of... the bottom end of this a lot a lot so as mentioned earlier before we got here if you're running the electron and you really like that smooth power but you want a little more on the bottom and just go up a tooth on your rear sprocket and this bike loves this kind of stuff Ooh, my bad didn't have the clutch in this bike loves this kind of stuff plinking around in these low speed little single tracks it's like the suspension likes it the chassis likes it super super fun all right so we stalled let's see what happens when we take it out of gear dumbass it's still in gear with the clutch in let's prime it see what happens when we put it back in neutral give it a little gas there we go yeah, idle sounds good. Could turn that idle up a little bit. Might help with that stall. Try that. Just a hair. The takeoff power is really good on, with this carburetor. Ooh, look at this slippery thing. That's a second gear chug, real good. Really slippery dry stuff. All right, so under full load, it feels like it could use either a larger main jet, which is kind of when the bike starts to get screaming up top, or I could take that needle I showed you guys with the clip on it, drop the clip on the needle, which raises the needle out of that needle jet and a little higher in that main jet. That allows more fuel to come in sooner. It's a little flat up top, but I mean, it's not bad. And you get there sooner because this is confirming my suspicion about the really short throw on this throttle because of the slide just tops out sooner so I like that so far so good as you can hear it's still idling fine and everything so bigger main jet or a clip position favorite trail you guys saw this trail in the first review video I gotta be careful on this slick stuff out here by myself just lofted the front end and a little wheelie no problem second gear Ooh. very slippery 
bike has really good front brakes. Probably because it's insanely heavy and has a really stink bug stance, which really bends down the front wheel. Everybody makes fun of me because I rev my bike when I'm got when I have the clutch in. I can't help it. I grew up on two strokes that didn't idle that have stuck with me since I was a little kid. So deal with it. Alright guys, our bike is really hot now. So let's do a rev test. So far so good. Little lean on the top, but like under wide, wide open throttle where the throttle's all the way open. Cooling fan is not running yet. No problem. Guys, all we've done so far is adjust the fuel screw at the house before we came here in the idle. This carburetor has really good lug ability. The Electron was good too, but there's just something about like a regular car reader's lug ability. All right, so I got myself into a little bit of a stall on the hill. Let's see what happens. It's just so slippery. Ah, it's just too loose. Wish I had the camera running for you to catch that stall. It wasn't that cool. I jammed the throttle really hard trying to go up that hill. Hit a flat spot. A flat spot in the carburetor. It was like a quick instance where it didn't get fuel, probably from that little squirt on the bottom end we've been talking about. And then it got fuel right after that and lit up. So a little inconsistent. Nice and bumpy. All right, so fun little warm up. I want to do a little test. A bike's hot again, so let's see. Oh. So you go straight to the top. That flat spot's more, it feels more like a rib limiter, to be honest, than the, the carburetor. I want to do a hill climb takeoff, a little hill, it's not much, but uh, in second gear because uh, I don't remember the old carburetor, the original carburetor being able to do this. So second gear. Okay. A little wheelie. That's good. Now you're not normally gonna start a bike in third gear, but just to see what kind of lugability we got. That's two. All right, there you have it. And <laughs> don't start a hill in third gear. Cooling fan, hard at work, super cool that this bike comes with one of those. I like that a lot. So we stalled it. Here's another good test. Not bad. All right, so this carburetor seems to have a little bit more, maybe like a little bit more drag on engine deceleration. I landed off that little jump in second gear and it felt like the engine dragged a bit more than before when I landed under no throttle. So engine braking. So regarding like what gear I'm in, in these really typical situations we usually hit these same trails every time we come out because we love them and really we probably only trail ride a couple times a year but if i'm in first second or third so far with this carburetor i'm in the same gears on the electron same exact gears one two three usually 
4 is unusual, just not going that fast in this kind of stuff to begin with. Plus, I'm not the best trail rider in the world already, so. Well, shoot, guys, so far so good. I, uh, I like this carburetor. I know it's been the source of mega frustrations for you guys, but I don't know if you guys just need to do the simple things we talked about, like the fuel screw, which now you can see why you would want this right here trail side if you had a problem. But man, so far so good. It's actually, it's not hot, but it's pretty stinking warm out for the winter time. It's probably, I don't know, feels like 70 on my back, but I'm a little hot. So anyways, real typical conditions, sea level, stock jets, so far so good. And there I did it again. All right, we got a successful start that time with the clutch pulled in and the bike in gear. Let's go get into some trees and stuff. I got pretty beat up in the rain. Oh, I should have gone in there. I need to get in there. It's over here. Beautiful in here. Nice and green. Blink. Oh, hit the skid plate. Glad it comes with one. I'm in first gear, kind of creeping around. See what we get into. The hell is this? Really slow hill climb action there. Something tells me I'm going the wrong way. Hey there, Mr. Tree. Don't clothesline me. Yeah, man, they got some weather out here. Nice cakey dirt down here. Yeah, this looks like a little less on the beaten path. Let's go put some scrapes on this bad boy. This, this is ugly. Oh, this is really ugly. I don't even want to do that. <laughs> so I'm not gonna. I can't get stuck in some situation like that by myself. But man, guys, this is uh, first gear creeping. Pretty fun. No big deal, the bike's not having any problems at all chugging around in here all right came out here to get my exercise so let's do it even this is a little bit of a goofy situation just like stuck in a hole kind of down off a little ledge it's not a big deal but like if you can creep out of stuff like this with control it's really good there you go slip the clutch a little bit that was poison oak. Love it when I get into that shit on accident. There we go. Come on, old girl. Oh, that was weird. That was almost like the fuel was sloshed around in the bowl. That was goofy. Didn't like it. Happened over some very, 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 very choppy stuff. When I was explaining the float height to you guys and that little tang that you don't want to bend, that's a situation where bending that tang on accident could produce a result like that. I don't think that's what it was because I was careful, but at any rate, the bike could not do this with the 2020 carburetor in it. It could with Electron. This was not a wheelie bike when it had the 2020 setup. Guys, that's good stuff. All right, guys, that was pretty good. So far, no real big issues with the carburetor. As you saw, a couple of bobbles out there. And I don't know if that has something to do with that uh, rod that goes down to the diaphragm or the accelerator pump that we looked at earlier. I mean, it seems like when I'm going over really 
fast and twitchy terrain that the bike has a tendency to kind of cut out like you saw. And so that might be a situation where the throttle is opening so quickly that it needs that burst of fuel off the bottom and then it can't get it because of that little bit of slack in the rod. So I'm not entirely sure it's kind of what it feels like, but for the most part, that has been a non-issue everywhere else. So uh, really cool, I'm glad. Again, I want you guys to check and make sure that you do or do not have that wire tie mod behind the car reader door in your 21s and 22s. And if you don't, go ahead and tie that sucker up. All right guys, now it's time to put the pro circuit pipe on the bike and the main reason is because this comes with a removable spark arrestor. This pipe's actually made for this bike by pro circuit specifically for the 300. It has its own proprietary pipe and part number. You can only get it from your dealer. They wouldn't let me get it to you guys can't even get it from Pro Circuit who makes it. You have to get this from an SSR dealer. Uh, I have a review video on this versus stock, sound clips, all that sort of thing. So you guys can check that out. It'll just be yet another video down in the description below. But since we're getting a little bit closer to the old lion's den, I definitely want to have the spark arrestor on the bike. So we're going to go ahead and plop this in real quick and then go out, see how it affects the bike with this FCR and Pro Circuit combo. So let's get back out there. All right, guys. Now that we're legal and we're barely legal, time to take her out. So I notice a lot of times when you add a pipe with a spark arrestor, it tends to eat up some of those free revving or free rev feel of a bike with an open pipe, like the stock pipe on this bike. And in return, the trade-off seems to be maybe a little bit more tractable or predictable bottom end torque. So we'll see if that sort of holds true. Not really a technical analysis, but just something I notice across the board on two strokes and four strokes growing up riding. So the key's on, the fuel's still on. Let's see if it fires up easy. No problem. And this pipe is quite a bit quieter, at least at idle, I feel like. It has a better note, in my opinion. But I like how raspy the open pipe is, too, when you open it wide open. Let's check out this super loose hill climb. See how it goes. second gear I started a little bit in third kind of a real slow roll on had to downshift a second but plenty of power so this thing actually feels more powerful and more responsive with this pipe with my electron carb it didn't feel more powerful with that pipe it actually felt a little bit more kind of like closed off on the bottom where the power was a little bit more muted with that pipe and the electron. So that feels really good, Pro Circuit pipe with this FCR. Kind of more like what you would expect uh, spending your hard-earned money on an exhaust pipe, so that's good. No bog problems. I like it. Let's go find some fun stuff. See all that poison oak over here. Yeah, under wide open throttle. It's definitely a little corked. It could definitely use uh, a clip lower to position or two on that needle or a bigger main jet. Then this thing will just be eaten up top. Right now the Electron absolutely smokes the top end. Compared to this FCR, it's not quite as good. The Electron has way more over rev. But I like this carburetor. This looks kind of ugly. And it is. Yeah, 
Now the torque with this pipe and this carburetor, remember the carburetor is bone stock, is better. It crept up that hill quite a bit better. So, or noticeably better. I don't want to make it sound like it's some life changing event, but it's noticeably better. So if you dropped a coin on a pipe, you know, that's what you want to hear. So go for it. being bad again I'm off the trails at least I got a spark rester this time right oh the mud hole that thing's taking a few kids out for sure With this car, bro, a winning combo. Oh, that wasn't a very winning combo. <laughs> Holy shit. Smashed the skid plate into the ground. Oh, so green and beautiful, man. That was second gear. Just chugged right up it much better with the pipe on it bottom end torque way better with the pipe on it guys i'm not having any big issues with this carburetor nothing that might just happen to any old carburetor so i'm wondering if we did it people i think it's time to head back to the truck as you can see the mighty old china it goes places it does things it's fun to ride it's running pretty damn good impressed with the fcr especially with the pro circuit so we'll go back and talk about that you know that is if i don't go over the bars right now <laughs> Woo! That's a wrap, boys. All right, everybody. So that concludes our test for the 21-22 SR300 FCR carburetor setup. And so I figured I'd just share a few of my final thoughts and show you guys some of the components that came out of this thing in doing this swap. I need to go get those. Yes, I brought a bunch of spare parts to the trail park because I care about you. So guys, when I ripped this out of my 20, Obviously, we ended up getting rid of the 20 air boot and the 20 intake flange. Now, if you want to run the Electron mod and you have a 21 or a 22, you need these. As mentioned, we're going to catalog a part number down below in the description. And you find folks who are also doing mods are going to help me add part numbers to that. Just drop me a comment, whatever it might be. Even if it's like oil filters and stuff, we'll get a good little directory going. We also have this air filter cage from the 2020. Now this is that 3M weather adhesive that was purposely put here by hand by JR in order to stop airflow from getting into that 2020 carburetor. They're actually trying to slow the air down and it just stabbed the living shit out of me. Holy crap. Then there's the, uh, <laughs> the 2020 two stroke style carburetor that actually came in this bike. It was okay. I'd say like if you were an ultra beginner, and you wanted the meekest power possible, this would be perfect. And there's no harm in that because let's say it's your first full size bike and it's pretty heavy. It's like 260 pounds or something like that. Then this might be a great option. So don't feel bad about it. It's just not enough for me and probably not enough for most of you. Anyways, after just one year of running that JR, like I said, is probably the guy that got the FCR clone to come to fruition in this bike so thank you jr and then of course myself being unsatisfied with the 2020 carburetor ultimately and realizing that because it was a two-stroke carburetor or two-stroke shape and dimension that i could develop this electron mod now i say i developed it not to be a cocky son of a bitch but before this these were not on the electron website and 
they were actually very hesitant to even allow me to do that. So once I had some success and started carrying them on my website, they started carrying them on their website. So proud of that, as you can tell. And a lot of you guys have already picked these up for me. I am so grateful for you guys. And what's even more exciting is that you guys share information with me about how it made your riding better, how your experience is better. And that is the coolest part. I feel like the SSR group, be it car raiders or whatever else, has just been the most willing to learn riding community because it is sort of like a subcategory of dirt bikes, right? Not everyone understands or cares for the China bike thing. And then you got other people on the other side that they're just perfect for and for a lot of reasons. Anyways, carrying on, guys, you are awesome. Your willingness to learn and be taught and also help me learn things when I don't know them is really cool. I feel like it's the most not the cool kid club of dirt bikers that have the least ego, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you guys are great. Now, what's my ultimate opinion about this carburetor? Well, you guys have been watching it for who knows how long this video is even gonna be by the time I edit it, but I've had no problems with it. I might be having a little issue with that stupid rod I showed you where there's some slack. So I'm not completely sold on that. That isn't quite right. You wouldn't have that in a regular Japanese key in. So definitely something to think about, but overall, this FCR and the 21-22 is a far cry from the 20. It is so much better than the 20. It has really great bottom end torque. That was with both the open pipe and the spark arrestor. Ranger just drove by. Thankfully I had this sucker on now because that's what they're looking for. And it had even better torque and smoother power delivery, in my opinion, per feel with the pro circuit on it. So again, that's really cool if you're gonna drop the coin on one of those and you kind of need to because you need a spark arrestor, then that's really good news. Of course, you guys can also get one of those little slip in from that company Fish spark arrestors for your stock pipe. Check out the exhaust pipe review video for that. So with some simple tuning, I think you guys are going to be able to tune your 21s and 22s very well. As mentioned before, I'm at sea level. The jets are stock. We'll database them down below in the description. All I've done is the simple fuel screw tuning procedure and set the idle. I haven't touched it once the entire day and that's for a reason I'm trying to see if I can find some inconsistencies and the only thing I can find or feel that I don't really like, I'm pretty sure is attributed to the slop in that little tiny rod pushing the accelerator pump diaphragm. Overall though, it didn't screw me up today. When you're riding generally, it is a non-issue. So the FCR is a very welcome upgrade. Uh, if they continue this into 23, go buy one if you want one. Don't let it stop you, it's really great. However, if this video was not what you needed and it didn't fix your problem, you still have the option to run the Electron. So that's really great. And compared FCR to Electron mod, the Electron has way, way, way more over rev than this does right now without swapping a main jet or a clip position like I mentioned on the GoPro footage. So I'll try that and then I know this will scream. JR had two of them just wired at Glen Helen a year ago and they ripped really well with these FCRs in them. Overall, the Electron's power is not as torquey on the bottom but has a lot more over rev. It has like this kind of a power curve, just linear. Always, no matter what, no fumbles, no flubbers. You always know what to expect. So, so if that softened bottom end bothers you, like I said earlier, you can just go up one or two teeth on your rear sprocket, or you can go down one tooth on the front sprocket. If you go down one tooth on the front sprocket, it's like adding three in the back. So that's a really drastic jump, but it's very cheap. It's like 15 bucks for that sprocket. So that's one way you could combat that. Also get rid of jets and jetting circuits and all the meshing they need to do together, all together. So you guys have options, it's really cool. And when I bought this bike, I knew I had to have it. I knew I needed to show it to people. I knew I needed to do stuff like this to it. I didn't know what I would get into, but I was just really attracted to it and knew that we could make some mods, make people happy, like develop an aftermarket for this bike. And as you guys can see, the forums are starting to gain a little bit of steam and it's really cool because all you guys are coming together and helping each other out. And I'm just trying to be a part of that. So we've gone over a lot. We've ripped carburetors apart. We've put them back together. We've tested them. We've tuned them. We've ridden them. We've talked about pipe swaps. Like I said, a shitload of information in this video. So because that's the case, I probably missed something. You probably have questions. You might have a notepad full of them by now. I'm not sure, but if you do, guys, drop them in the comment section below. If I don't see it or don't get back to you, just copy it, paste it, and send it to me in an email. If I miss it, it's on accident. I'm not ignoring you, but I am also super busy. But at the same time, I always wanna help you guys best I can. MX Revival in my business revolves around you guys. So that's the only way business works. You have a problem, I help you. So in closing, guys, I wanna dedicate this video to a couple of really cool dudes, one of them being JR at SSR. They're 
head engineer. If it weren't for him, this mod probably wouldn't exist and you guys would probably still have the 2020 carburetor in your SR300s and they might not have sold as many of them either. So additionally, I wouldn't have these components to test for you if it wasn't for JR. He sent these parts to me. I didn't even ask for them. I think he knows I'm trying to do my best to help you guys with this bike and also there's a very, very broad audience on YouTube. So JR, thanks for the parts. I appreciate that. Thanks for all the work you do on Facebook and the forums. I see you trying to help people out. Guys, JR goes out of his way to do that. He doesn't have to do that stuff. He's not customer service at SSR. So if that guy gives you his time and he's trying to explain something to you, not only is he very intelligent, but just give him a listen and you'll probably learn something from it. Now, the second guy, Tony, I think your last name is Lucero. Tony, Anthony, I received your emails with your videos uh, about the bike. The 22 you guys have at your dealership in Louisiana, not starting. I wanted to also dedicate this video to you. It was literally the last straw. I've had these parts for six, eight months. I don't know how long and I just haven't done this yet. Seeing you, a technician, the shop foreman care that much about trying to get your customers squared away and make sure these bikes are running properly. Like I said, it was just the last straw. So this video is for you, dude. I hope it helps. I thought that was very, very cool. And the reason I'm dedicating it to him is because Tony is in a position to help you guys. He is literally working at a place that sells these bikes. And so because of that, that's a hub where people need to go and get educated on the product and how to make it run right, how to tune it, whatever. So, so I was really inspired when I saw how much you cared, so much that you sent me a bunch of videos in the email about the bike not running and cranking. So anyway, buddy, again, this is for you. This is for JR. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. I have just one more thing to say, and that is I am building you guys a wicked monster YZ250, all the bells and whistles, frame up. It's a giveaway bike. You guys can win it for as little as 20 bucks. All the proceeds are gonna go to help Road Recovery and our boy Cameron Neem who's still recovering from cancer. In addition to that, every single YZ250 build episode has additional MX parts and products that I'm just giving away. Pipes, handlebars, I'm gonna be giving away some electrons. I've already given away decal kits. I have some cylinder heads to give away. So it's a really, really big deal. It's been a lot of fun. I've already had over 25 guys win prizes in like five episodes. And it's literally thousands and thousands of dollars of really cool stuff that's free just because you entered to win Thundercracker, which is the YZ250 build. So go ahead and check that link out right here. I appreciate you guys. Until next time, get on your SSRs, tweak them, tune them, ride safe, and I'll see you soon.